Grandma lets four boys enter backyard daily, and Gut tells neighbor to film it. She opened the notice and her heart sank. She couldn't believe she had to go to court. She made herself a cup of coffee, pondering on what she could do to fix this. Her thoughts were abruptly interrupted by a loud noise. When she peeked outside, she recognized the boys. Her heart was racing as they walked up to her front door. After years of hard work, 75-year-old Jerry Suttle was enjoying her retirement thoroughly. Years ago, she bought a large piece of land which she was now enjoying in her retirement. The land was gorgeous, but she struggled to maintain it due to her advanced age. Unfortunately, her community started to notice that. Jerry was a proud resident of Riesel, Texas. When she initially purchased her home, she was on cloud nine. However, now all she sees is effort. Her husband had passed years ago, and with her family moved out, Jerry was all alone. Due to this, it was easy to take advantage of her. Jerry used to love gardening, and she was proud of her yard. However, as she grew older, it became harder to maintain. What was once her pride and joy is now nothing but overgrown grass and trees. This made Jerry terrified because there was ample space for intruders to hide. With so much room for people to hide, problems were inevitable. The first time Jerry heard the peculiar noise, she tried her best to brush it off as nothing more than an animal passing through. However, the noise persisted, and as she paid closer attention, she realized that it was voices. Her body was overcome by fear. She didn't know how to proceed, and she felt powerless. It took her a good few minutes to gather the strength to look outside her window. Sweat was dripping off her forehead as she moved the curtain. She noticed a group of young boys crouching behind the overgrown bushes. She couldn't make out what they were getting up to, but she knew that they were trouble. Anybody who trespasses can't have good intentions. Jerry knew that she couldn't go and confront them, and the last thing she wanted to do was contact the authorities. She didn't want to interact with them at all. Jerry had a terrible experience with the authorities a few weeks ago. One morning, she noticed a paper sticking on her door, and to her surprise, it was a court order. Due to the notice, she was in breach of property laws, and she was terrified. She was allegedly in contravention of Texas laws regarding the length of her grass. The legislation states that if one's grass is above 18 inches, you'll be liable to pay a fine. However, Jerry had a problem. Jerry was completely unaware of the existence of the law, and she didn't receive any communication prior to the court order regarding her grass. They admonished her for dodging the penalty the first time they contacted her and compelled her to show up in court. They were completely aware of Jerry's advanced age, as well as her dire circumstances. However, that didn't prevent them from threatening her with imprisonment. The police chief, Danny Crumnow, stated that Jerry was blatantly in contravention of city regulation. She was astonished when the cops showed up on her home and notified her that her offenses were severe. Since her nasty run-in with the cops, Jerry had been avoiding them like the plague. She was out of choices, so she did something that caught the eye of her next-door neighbor. Jerry allowed the children to trespass on her land. She didn't mind as long as they didn't approach her home. However, not everyone shared the same view as she did. Tom was Jerry's neighbor, and he was a quiet and reserved man. He took it upon himself to take care of his elderly neighbor to the best of his abilities, but he himself was an elderly man and he couldn't always assist Jerry until this. Unbeknownst to Jerry, Tom noticed the boys creeping in and out of Jerry's backyard and immediately began to worry for her safety. They were young but secretive, constantly carrying bags in and out of her yard. He had enough. He grabbed his outdoor security camera and set it up overlooking Jerry's backyard. What he found was beyond imagination. While Jerry sat in her living room pretending to be oblivious to the commotion in her backyard, Tom was hot on their case. He turned on his screen and fixated on the live action. They were completely clueless that someone was watching them. Tom's jaws dropped as he realized what they took out of their bags. The boys had brought gardening tools. Every day, the young boys worked on Jerry's yard piece by piece. Jerry had no idea that word of her possible arrest spread throughout the neighborhood like wildfire. It sparked horror and shock in everyone who heard the news. How could they possibly arrest an old woman over tall grass? The boys wanted to do more. When Jerry failed to appear in court, a warrant was issued for her arrest. She pondered her options. 
Jerry was too old and weak to do the work herself and had little money to pay someone else to do it. Tom couldn't believe his eyes, and Jerry never expected what would happen next. At the edge of Jerry's expansive land, Tom could see four boys coming toward her house, already inside her yard. He grew nervous and watched as they knocked on Jerry's door. When Jerry answered the door, Tom could see her nervous expression as she braced herself for what they had to say. The boys were young, very young in fact. The oldest could have been maybe 15. Still, Jerry felt uneasy knowing these boys had been trespassing on her property for days. They started looking around her yard, and that's when she saw them clearly. These boys had mud and dirt all over their clothes. Finally, they began to speak. Two of the boys said hi and disappeared, while the other two stayed back. The boys who stayed were holding garden tools, a weed whacker, shears, and some other things. Jerry was frozen. What on earth were these boys doing? But then she saw the other two boys come around the corner and one of them was pushing a lawnmower. Shortly after, the boys began to mow the lawn after explaining that they'd already ripped away all the overgrown weeds. Jerry couldn't believe what she was witnessing. The boys' effort sent tears down her face. She's lived there for 59 years and was left speechless after seeing the good deed and was grateful for their help. The four boys who were brothers told the news why they wanted to help her. It's a summer day. We don't have season passes yet to Warren Falls. What else could we do? Just go out and help some people. These young boys' efforts were far more than just cutting grass. They didn't know they'd save Jerry from prison. She's 75 years old and she needs some help mowing, said Blaine Reynolds, one of the boys. It's the least we could do. Another brother, Brandon Reynolds, also added, I really wouldn't want her coming out here and doing it or paying someone else when we could just do it for free. As the sun shone brightly that day, neighbors couldn't help but witness these incredible boys' actions. Jerry ran over to the boys and gave them cold drinks, but then out of the corner of her eye she spotted five more men coming towards her yard. One of them was Tom. As they began getting closer, she could tell that the neighbors who were approaching her also had gardening tools on them. The neighbors had huddled together and had come up with a plan. Half the team would take one side of the yard and the other half the other side. The neighbors of Jerry Sutter also pitched in with the four boys. They brought their lawnmowers and started going to work without any dispute. Even in 90-degree weather, the Reynolds brothers and neighbors of the elderly woman came together to help her out. Jerry looked out onto her lawn and couldn't believe what was happening. A whole community was coming together for her. I can't believe this. I'm very seldom without words. But this is one time, you mark it down in history, that I didn't have something to say, Jerry said. She was wholly shocked that all the work had been done in under two hours. She couldn't believe that the young boys and the community had done and it left her completely speechless. When the boys finally heard about the court warrant for Jerry, they couldn't contain themselves. I'd do it for her a second time or a third time, Blaine Reynolds said. Anything to keep that lady from having to go to court. What an incredible act of human virtue and kindness, and all coming from boys of such a young age. After the grass had been cut down and the yard was all cleaned up, Jerry was told she needed to go to court and sign documents indicating that she never received the original notice to appear in court. She wanted to get the charges dropped, but still the court had other ideas. It's very heartbreaking to see that someone that I didn't even know came out and spent two hours in the sun doing what we thought the city wanted done and then they turn around and say no, Jerry said. Their decision angered the entire community and they were ready to fight. The city still stood by Jerry's violation. They wanted this poor woman to appear in court because of her infraction. But her community couldn't let that happen. KWTX News went to Facebook and other media to cover this incredible story and show how when a community comes together, anything's possible. Jerry didn't have to go to court and her warrant has been dismissed. All thanks to these four incredible boys and acts of kindness aren't in short supply in Texas. He joined the police force to serve and protect. Over the years, he was a witness to the best and worst events. He wiped the sweat from his brow. He just had to deliver some bad news. Not a great start to the day. Half an hour in and he was already tired. He always drove the long way back to the precinct to visit the housing estates, but before he could get there, his foot lowered on the brake. 
What was that woman doing? As a child, John Crawford didn't know what he wanted to be, but he knew he had to help others. Every day he saw homeless on the street, children hungry, mothers struggling to support their families. It struck a chord in him. He always made sure to give sandwiches, money, or randomly pay for a stranger's shopping. Every Sunday, he volunteered at his local soup kitchen for a few hours. Unfortunately, he was familiar with the struggles of life. His earliest memory wasn't a birthday party or a trip to the beach or a warm summer evening. His earliest memory was one of his father's episodes. He'd wake to glass breaking, doors slamming and screams. He wet the bed until he was 14 years old. Then one day, he was woken up in the middle of the night. He was dressed in outside their house of horrors before he was fully awake. His mother placed his bag on his back and took his hand. It was still dark and they were both terrified, but she knew her eight-year-old deserved better. The essentials were packed into a single luggage bag, which she dragged to the bus stop. They got a one-way ticket to Madison, Alabama. John's father always said he'd never amount to much, but over the years, he proved him wrong. John joined the police academy the moment he finished school, and he managed to hold down a job to help support his mother. They lived in a tiny two-bedroom flat. They scrubbed mildew from the walls once a month. They were poor, but they were safe. And when he finally became a sheriff, he made sure to take care of her. He refused to let any woman or child go through similar struggles. Sheriff Crawford knew he couldn't save everyone, but when he saw Rachel, he knew he had to do something. Rachel Godley Brindley was just 20 years old when she met Ryan. He was a few years older, but she was drawn to him like a magnet. He quickly became her whole world. She canceled plans with friends and family just to spend more time with him. She couldn't get enough of his company, but things moved quicker than either of them ever expected. After the first year, they were married. However, things quickly changed. Rachel gave birth to their first child a few months after becoming newlyweds. Ryan was under more pressure than ever to provide for them. He took every available shift at work, and she was lucky to see him for one hour a day. And they fought for the majority of that hour. He was successful in his career, but the stress was taking a toll on his relationship with Rachel. But she always went along with his choices because she could never say no to him. Rachel always believed her husband had good intentions. That's why when he suggested that she leave work to stay at home with their two kids, she agreed. And even when he missed their plans to stay at the office, she forgave him. He worked hard to provide for them. He promised to buy her dream home, and eventually he did. But what use was a home for a family that never came together? And when the time came for him to keep a promise, he did the unthinkable. Rachel managed to redecorate their entire new home during her third pregnancy. Her back ached and her ankles swelled, but she still painted every wall of the house herself. She wanted her children to have fond memories of their childhood. And after 36 hours of labor, she brought her baby boy home to meet the family. The first four months flew by. Ryan was always home for breakfast and dinner, and he made sure to help more with the kids. Then he did something that made her question her choices. When Sheriff John Crawford saw Rachel on her lawn, he took a double take. He pulled over and ran to her side as she struggled with her baby strapped to her chest. She was weak and tired. Everything okay, ma'am? He asked as kindly as he helped her up from the grass. Yes, officer, I just need to sit down for a while. It's not easy working in this heat. The child began to cry. The officer couldn't stand by and watch her suffer. He took off his hat and reached for the handle of the lawnmower. Y'all, I thought I was about to get in trouble or something, Rachel later shared. But this officer just wanted to lend a hand to a mother in need. Ryan had returned to work a few weeks prior and Rachel was struggling to manage three kids while running a house alone. The pressure was taking its toll. He's been working hard on a work project and hasn't had time to cut it, Rachel said. It was a nice day out and so I thought I'd help my husband out and cut it myself. I enjoy cutting the grass. But Rachel underestimated the difficulty of doing tasks while her body was still healing. And little baby Michael wasn't in the best form that day. Rachel explained that when the officer passed, the sweet man stopped her and insisted on mowing the lawn for her. At the time, Rachel was worried. She was alone with the kids and a police officer had never approached her before. And if she wasn't stressed enough that day, seeing a squad car pull up outside her home made her panic. But now, she's delighted with her surprise visitor. Ryan later found out about Rachel's helper that day. 
It's small in nature, but it was a huge help to my wife today. The incident has opened up Ryan's eyes, reminding him of the importance of family. Since the incident, he's made sure to leave work at work and spend extra time with his family. But why didn't the officer just keep driving? Although he joined the force to protect and serve, Sheriff Crawford also makes it his mission to be kind and helpful. And after completing the job, Rachel thanked him with a well-deserved tall glass of lemonade. And understandably, her experience has gained plenty of online attention. It's not often you meet a stranger willing to help. Someone definitely deserves a special award for kindness.